In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the trail renderer. Now, throughout this video, you might hear me refer to it as the line renderer. I don't know why I always end up calling it that. Line renderer, something different. Today, we're going to be working with that trail renderer. So let's go ahead and we'll select our player ship. I'm going to zoom in on them. And I actually want them centered at 000 for the position. So I'll reset the position. And what I want to do today is when we're flying our ship around, I want to have like little swooshies kind of show up at the back of my ship just to kind of give uh, a feeling of motion and propulsion. Later on, we can go ahead and add some sound effects and particle effects as well. But for now, I just want to take care of that trail render. So I'm going to go ahead, turn my player ship off. I want to keep it at 000. I just don't want to see it right now. I am going to create an empty, which I will call thruster. I'm going to add a component. The component I want is my trail renderer. And I'll do that in a minute. Uh, we're not going to bother playing with the light map. We'll go over these in a second. Same as with the colors. Uh, minimum vertex distance. We'll leave it at the default. We'll cover auto destruct. And the rest I'll leave off. Okay, well, let's just start at the top. If I were to go ahead and just start moving this, we get this big pink line. And of course, with Unity, we know that pink means that there's no material attached. So let's go make one. I'm going to go ahead, create a folder for materials. I'm going to put it in there. So we'll go create material. And I'm just going to call it player trail. I'm going to come up to the type for the shader. And we want a particle one. We want particle, and I'm just going to go with additive. And if we go ahead and select the thruster where we have the materials, I'm just going to drag it into element zero. There we go. And it turns white. And I want to take note of these little sections that we're seeing here. Because that is the next part we're looking at. So we'll go ahead, we'll change the size at first. So I'll leave the, the start width at one. That's how wide it's going to be where it originates. The end width is as it goes along, how skinny does it get? I'm actually going to bring mine all the way down to zero. So you get that kind of long tapered look. Now time. Remember we're looking in at these little sections here. That is how long each one of these sections is going to last in game before it disappears. And I already know five is too long. If we went ahead and did three, and I'm just going to quickly start the game and stop it to clear those out. Actually, you can't really notice it when the game is running any, or when the game is not running anyway. But if I grab this and we start dragging along, after three seconds, it starts to disappear. And of course, if you want it to last longer, you can go ahead and make it last longer. Uh, three seconds is probably too long for me anyway. I'm going to say two. Because our ship does move fairly fast. Now, the benefit of having really long trails is that when something's in the distance, you can really see that super long trail. It's a cool effect. Go ahead and definitely play with it as your game progresses. But for now, I'm going to set it to two. So start with end width we've seen. I'm going to stretch this out a bit and let's go into colors. So the colors are listed closest to the origin and then down to the tip. So I'm going to start off with something, uh, maybe like a hot yellow. Then go into something maybe a little reddish. Then I'll go into maybe an orange. A little bit more of a reddish orange, right, right about there. Then into maybe a little bit more yellow. And the last one, let's do a little less yellow. And I'm going to bring the alpha down a bit. Now, this probably isn't going to have that big of an effect until we actually get around to adding a material to it. It does a bit. You don't get as much fall off as you do with it full. So we'll go ahead and we'll wait till we actually get around, sorry, adding a texture to this. But I still don't want to import any textures yet. I don't want to import anything, so we'll just stick with this. But when we do get around to adding a texture, we can have like a nice gradient roll off on it so you don't have such a sharp edge to it. But again, it really just depends on the game that you're making. All right, min vertex distance. So it's the minimum distance each one of these can be apart from each other. And auto destruct. If we have auto destruct turned on, let's actually go ahead and turn this on in game. 
So as it flies around, if it goes ahead and shrinks up, it disappears, and we go ahead, do it again, it's still there. We can keep moving it. But if we have auto destruct turned on, when it reaches, well, let's start it with it turned on. Well, we'll leave it like that. When it reaches zero, as in there's no trail renderer left, it deletes itself. And we don't want that because our ship is going to be moving and stopping as we go along. So we want to make sure that's turned off. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that up. I am going to go ahead and make a prefab. I'll just drag it in because we are going to need multiple ones on our ship and our enemy ships. So I'm going to go turn my guy back on. And I want to go ahead and position this at 000 as well. I'm actually going to turn the trail renderer off. I'm just going to put a gizmo on it just so I can see where it is. Oh, let's do a red one. I'm going to open up player ship and I want to create an empty. I'm just going to call it thrusters. And the whole point of that is just to be able to drag and drop these thrusters under it. Just to keep our hierarchy clean on our ship. So as we start adding more particle effects and lights and everything else. When I'm open and closing the player ship prefab, I don't want you know, like 100 different things listed here. All right, so try to find a logical spot for your thrusters. I'm just going to put two. I'm going to put one here, maybe one right there. So I'm going to move it over, move it back. Doesn't have to be perfect because, well, remember, this is just for learning. We're going to go ahead and make it a lot better a little bit later on. So about there. Now, I know I want another one. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And since my ship is symmetrical, I know I can go ahead and since this is at the negative 1.371 on X, I can go ahead and just move this one to the right. The exact same. So just make it positive, And there we go. Symmetrical again. I do want to rename these just so they're a little bit easier to identify. So I'll call that one the left thruster. And we'll get rid of the old one. And of course, right thruster. Great. We'll take my ship. The parent part will hit apply so that it reapplies it to the prefab. Everything should be blue under it. Now, when we go ahead and start, let's go ahead and turn those renderers back on. <laughs> we just actually have to take one, turn it back on, hit apply. That way, there it affects the prefab as well as anything from the prefabs. Oh, it didn't. Oh, let's go ahead and turn it on. So, check this prefab out. It did do it there. And you know, I think it's because I duplicated a lot. Oh, if you run into problems with it, we can go ahead and reassign it later. Well, let's go fly around. And that's actually too thick. It's thicker than I wanted. It looks cool in the distance though, doesn't it? I want it thinner, much thinner. And shorter. I like it to be just off the screen a bit. So I'm just going to take this first one. Let's just select them both. Uh, width, to start with, I'm going to bring it down to maybe 0.5. And let's do one on time. Let's see how that looks. That doesn't look too bad. You get a little bit of the color. It still looks pretty cool in the scene. I'm going to try a little bit shorter, though. Is 0.5 too short? And again, this is going to be season to taste. A lot of it's just going to be, yeah, I like that. A lot of it's just going to be, you know, how you have your camera set up and how you actually just want it to look in the scene. Especially if you go on later on and you start making it multiplayer. That's going to completely change what you're looking for. Because you, you really do want to be able to see these. But anyway, that's good enough for now. We've got that set up. Uh, turning these on and off while our player is thrusting. We don't really need a script for it because all we have to do is just turn these on and off and adjust the properties here. But I am going to go ahead and make a script for it because later on I know I'm going to want to add sound when I thrust. Maybe put a little particle system at the very back here so that it kind of covers up the blockiness of the start of the thruster. And possibly even a light so I can uh, give that sort of like emissive look as when we, when we thrust. So let's create that script now and I'll just call it thruster. I'm going to open it up. And there's not a lot we have to do in here just yet. Take that off. Uh, we do need access to our trail renderer. And we want to make sure that we have that. So require component type of trail renderer. And then we can come in here and say trail renderer. I'm just going to keep it private. We do not need to expose it in the inspector because we know it's 
there because of the required component. And in a week, is where I'll go ahead and get a reference for it. So I'm going to say tr is equal to get component, the component we want to get, the trail renderer. We now have it assigned. And there's one more method I'm going to make, which will be public, because this is the one we're going to use to activate and deactivate the all the things for thrusting. So not only our trail renderer, but our particle effects and even our sound. We're not going to return anything, and I guess we'll just call it activate. Yeah, activate sounds good. And I'm going to pass in a Boolean value, which I'll just call activate. And I'm going to give it a default value of true. And all I want to do is say is if we are activating, do something else do something else. So if we're going ahead and activating, we want to make sure that our trail render dot enabled is equal to true. We want that on. Uh, turn on particle effects. Turn on sound. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What else, whatever else you have. Then of course, when we pass in a false value, we want to turn all that stuff off. So trail render enabled. Well, it's going to be equal to false. And then also turn off anything associated with thrusting. Great. We'll save that off. I'm going to come back into Unity, grab any one of my thrusters. I'm actually just going to do both of them. Drag that on. Actually, I guess I should apply this too. And let's open up the player movement script. Since this is where we get the input for moving, this is where I want to put it going to stay private, so I'm going to use the serialized field because I do want them accessible in the inspector. And since we added that thruster script, we can just refer to them as thrusters, so we don't have to worry about accidentally dragging some other game object in here. And plus, it'll give us direct access to the thruster component we made it. So let's just call it thruster. And this is going to be an array. There's more than one. And I'm going to come down to thrust. And I just want to make some comments here. We are uh, with we start to thrust or trust <laughs> call thruster dot activate. When we stop thrusting, call thruster dot activate false. Now right now there's no benefit in actually setting that up because all we do is just activate the trail renderer on and off. But it is something we're gonna need a little bit later on. So let's go ahead, we'll assign those into the player movement script. Uh, here we are right here, size zero. So I'm going to go ahead, lock the inspector so I can come in and click the left and right thruster. I'm just going to drag and drop it in. There we go, left and right. The order really isn't going to matter to me. I'm always going to be activating and deactivating my thrusters all at the same time. But maybe you want to go a little bit further and when you're turning right, either you just don't have the, the right thruster activate. So you just have the left ones to give the impression of only the force being applied from, this, from the left. Or maybe just your right ones are shorter. Or maybe you've got you know, thrusters on the side of your ship. Whatever you want, you can go ahead and set it up. But for me, I'm just going to have all my thrusters activate all at once. So I'll just keep them in any order that it gives me. All right, I'm going to save that off. I want to reapply my ship. And I think that's it for this video. Nice, quick, short one. Woohoo! Need some blur. Song two. All right. We got our thrusters done. I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>